Hi everybody and welcome to Caught in the Wool episode 41. I am your host Sam B and this is my co-host who doesn't usually do her job Peach and um yeah welcome episode 40? What? Okay can you stop looking out the window? She thinks there are kitty cats outside. There aren't any kitty cats. So it's been two weeks which is normal. We're doing a bi-weekly um, podcast schedule, basically. And uh, yeah, so here I am, right on schedule. I've been uh, keeping up with this bi-weekly schedule since the start of the new year, and hopefully we can continue it until indefinitely. <laughs> so for those of you guys who are new, I am Sampy already said that, but <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a goofy day. It's always a goofy day here. Um, I work at Bumblebee Acres Farm, which is where I am at now. Caught in the Wool podcast is a podcast put out by Bumblebee Acres Farm. Um, Bumblebee Acres Farm is run by my family and myself, and we farm wool. We have sheep, goats, llamas, um, well, one llama, He's our guard llama, but I always say llamas because up until recently we had several. Um, and angora bunnies, and but most importantly, we hand dye yarn. So occasionally we will have wool from our own farm, but we don't have enough sheep to have all of the wool that we dye and all the yarn that we dye be from our farm. What are you doing? Sometimes having a co-host that likes to just run around and be crazy is like really makes me question, really makes me question your role in this podcast, Peach. Dochi, can you come here right now? Also, I call her Dochi, which was my Latvian great-grandmother's nickname for um, a booty. Yes. Okay, you're going to sit on that, on that pillow? All right, all right, all right. All right. And uh, yeah, she's kind of like a has a fluffy round booty, so we call her Dutch. Dutchy. Yeah. Dutchy. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so yes, we can dye yarn. Most of it is inspired by our favorite books, movies, TV shows, um, but sometimes also just our favorite things. And yeah, um, I don't hand dye the yarn. My mother and my my mother Queen Bee and my sister Sen Bee hand dye the yarn. Baby B, who is my other sister, and I process all the yarn. Um, I design patterns, Sen B designs patterns, and Bro B, our youngest B, who just turned 18, and the only boy B on the farm, um, he does a lot of the farm work because he's the big strong man on the farm. <laughs> it used to be all, all of us girls when he was little, but now that he's... Uh, He's big and strong and taller than all of us. We uh, we kind of have him do <laughs> do a lot of it. Anyway, um, if you guys saw episode thirty nine, we have just added two new fluffy puppy bees to the family, Hildy and Ralphie, and they are doing really well. Um, they have settled in. A good amount. Um, when we first brought them home, they were getting into everything. They still want to get into everything, but it's not quite as bad. Stop staring at me. She's like, why are you talking to that thing? Come here then. Come here then. Sit on my lap. Um, Peach is still not a very big fan of them. <laughs> She's tolerating them a lot more. Like, she'll sit on the couch next to, um, my mom and Hildy now, but yeah, before you didn't want to be anywhere near them. So yeah, Peach is a very serious dog. She, uh, she doesn't really like to be playing with other dogs. I don't know if it's because she used to be a service dog. And so like, she didn't get a lot of dog socialization when she was a puppy. Like I told her, don't like look at other dogs. Don't go to other dogs because she was a service dog. So now she, uh, I think maybe she just thinks she's better than other dogs. Yeah, and her hair is finally long enough that I can put it in ponytail again. Yeah, 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 but I need to trim your face a little bit. Yes, I do. You are getting, you are looking like a wild little mop. So, Peach is a Havanese. 
if anybody was wondering. And I'm gonna stop like cuddling my dog even though like she's just so cuddly today. I gave her a bath yesterday and I groomed her out and everything and now she's so fluffy and it's just I want to cuddle it. It looks like a fluffy little cream puff. Yes! Yes! <laughs> okay, so on to other events on the farm. So for those of you who are new, those of you who are returning, you're probably like Sam, we already know this. I typically talk about what's new on the farm, what's been going on, um, random stuff, my life stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then we go into projects and FOs and whips and all of that. And then we talk about the upcoming shop update. And then, and then I leave. <laughs> so other than getting puppies, nothing new has been really going on at the farm. Um, we did do some online shopping. So those of you who are new, I don't ever really leave the farm. None of us bees really do. So like online shopping is pretty much my insulin pump is yelling at me. Stop yelling at me. Stop yelling at me because I'm diabetic, hence insulin pump. <laughs> Um, so we don't really leave the farm at all since the pandemic started just because I'm highly susceptible to being like three to four times more likely to have very serious complications if I get COVID or be hospitalized or die. So, um, we've just been lucky enough that we all work from home and we all live here on the farm that we don't have to go out anywhere. But, um, it has made like online shopping. <laughs> a very guilty pleasure lately. So, um, I mentioned a few podcasts ago that we had gotten planners and I never got to show you our planners, but I really wanted to show you guys because it is like, and I can only really show you mine because I don't have everybody's and they're kind of like hefty books. Um, I mentioned that this year we were doing planners because in the past um, we haven't ever done planners for the business or our schedules and it's just like obviously we should. So we went with this company called Golden Coil. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, but they have all these different covers. They have their biggest line are their linen type covers. So they look almost like woven cloth like a little bit, um, but they're still hard textured. Mine is a faux leather cover um, just because they didn't have the color that I wanted in the linen when we ordered them. But they have this really cool thing where you can customize your layout for every week. So mine is kind of just a standard um, planner layout, as you can see. Like I just have nice big sections for my weeks and then my little to-do list down here. You can actually customize it. So they have several different layouts and they say that they're adding more all the time, but Queen Bee, Sun Bee, and Baby Bee all have the same layout for theirs, which is different than mine. They have all of their week sections on this page. And then on this page, they have a little like square here for like um, ideas, another one down here for something else. They have their to-do lists here and here. It's just kind of like a little bit more on this side for them to just like doodle and whatever. But this kind of layout always worked really well for me in high school and college. So that's what I went with and I've been really liking it. And another cool thing you can do is you can put in these like add-on pages. So they have stuff for meal planning, um, housekeeping kind of list stuff. Um, you know, of course they have your calendar comes in at every, the start of every month. But they also have this cool thing that's like social media planning. So one add-on of this is like, one seven page or one seven like section page and another one. Um, so I added two of those at the start of every month so that way I would get 28 full days of social media planning so I can kind of like sketch out and remind myself to do like an Instagram post every day and when I need to do newsletters and stuff like that. Um, and then you can add in like either graph pages or blank pages. So I have four blank pages at the start of every month. 
And then at the very end, I added, because you can have up to like 242 pages, I added just a bunch of pages of um, like grid paper for sketching if I wanted to. But yeah, so it has been very helpful. Um, this is my month. <laughs> I did not decorate mine with washi tape my February month, but the other bees did. So on my blank pages, I'm just kind of writing things that I have to remember. So I have like cotton wool podcast episode 40. So when I start to write the show notes, I can kind of just write them out down here and then type them up and it'll be easier because I can just, I'm faster at writing than I am at typing. So I can just write down my list of stuff I have to remember. And then for my week, and I really like how plain they are, I can add in washi tape. So each week I add in different like designs of washi tape. The other bees get really cute with theirs. Um, I like the cute look, but I'm not crazy about clutter and stuff. Like I need things to be almost very simplistic. Otherwise I look at it, I just get like overwhelmed and I can't like think clearly. So um, I, try to keep it pretty simplistic for myself. That's why I didn't decorate my month of February because I did for January. Like I did decorate it a little bit more. I put the washi tape up there and everything, but it's, I don't know. I guess it's not like too crowded, but I don't know. I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like doing it. Maybe I'll do it later. I mean, I have a whole month to like change my mind or what have you. Then another thing all of us bees did is we made vision boards and we put them in our planners. We took a blank page and we printed out a bunch of stickers and kind of just made a little vision board. So mine looks a little different from everybody else's. I've never made a vision board before and it's kind of like opposite of what I said for like writing down ideas, like it's faster for me to write an idea than it is for me to like type it up. Well, for the computer, it's easier for me to visually make something. So I made mine online first and then I printed out all the images and then I wrote in kind of how I had written in when I had digitally designed it. But yeah, so I am i don't feel bad sharing my vision board with you guys but yeah so that's just kind of like a little reminder for us to look at stuff and be re-inspired with how we're feeling about things I had like I use canva for our business so canva.com for like making cover photos for like the youtube videos and stuff and I really like their layouts. Um, I don't always use them exactly, but I had used their vision board layout and kind of it inspired me to do different things to kind of pick out this like golden color theme, which I liked and I wrote everything in gold because my planner is like a nice beige gold and I just felt like it was very cozy, very Hugo kind of vibes. But look at this knitting section. Like look at those cute, this cute like stock photo of socks. <laughs> I was just like, this is, this is a mood. Like, and look at this beautiful yarn. So I don't know, they don't tell you who is the credit of those stock photos. They're just stock photos you can use. So that is, uh, that's what I got there. Now I having problems closing my book because that's the last page. So yes, so all of us bees have that. And now we have our, we have a weekly meeting every Sunday to go over important days for the upcoming week, um, what needs to be done each day. Um, so like if we have to ship orders by Thursday, baby B knows she has to have everything tagged and twisted by Wednesday while well, baby B and myself. Um, next week, I just have to do taxes, which sucks, but that means that my week is pretty clear because it's pretty much just taxes for me. Um, I do our own taxes. I wish I didn't, but because our business is so unique, uh, we just, I just do it anyway. Um, but what was I going to say? 
yeah so like other other things that we put in so everybody put in for today Wednesday which is when I film um, that I have to film at one o'clock and so everybody else has to take out the puppies and go find something to do between one and like two thirty, three o'clock so I can do this and not everybody's running around and all of that stuff but yeah um so this week this past I think it was Monday we were watching um and I know a lot of people use the Hobonichi planners and I really like the Hobonichi planner but it's it's a little too small like I need all of that big room and I really liked how you can plan the layouts so we went with that but we were watching Sandy by the lakeside and she uses the Hobonichi planners and she got a five-year planner which is something I didn't ever look into before or really think about but it's really cool because it puts your like it has each day like of the month of the year but instead of having like you know one day for each day of the year and then going into your planner for the next year you have a little section on each page for each date for 2021, 2022, 2023, and it goes all the way to 2025. And it's a nice like just little stack of those. So what you can do is you go through and you write what happened each day. You know, you can decorate it as much as you want. The So they have it on like the left hand, left hand side, yeah. So it would be like this side when you open your little book would have that list and then on this side you have just a blank page so if you want to put anything like extra in there you can. I don't think that is so cool for like journaling like not for actually a planner planner like for being like a workhorse that's what I'm going to use over there but um for kind of like just documenting your life we thought that was super cool so we went on and we ordered four of them. <laughs> they were pricey but I feel like you only well you only buy one every five years so it's not that expensive if you think about it like that it's still pretty expensive so yeah um we've been really getting into that and hopefully we stick with it hopefully it's not like just a phase for us but I know that like through college and high school and college I really relied on my planner to keep me organized and I know that it's been very 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 helpful and stress relieving for the business for us to all have like clubs have to ship by this date we are dying clubs on this date and you know stuff like that when the shop updates are happening what exactly is going into that shop update all of that stuff it's just been really really nice and it's like we should have done that earlier but you know our life was very crazy before this so before this before now um I mentioned that like weirdly the pandemic like 2020 was a super weird year super stressful year but it was the least stressful year we'd had in a very long time just because we didn't have our own farm before 2020 we moved here in 2019 and before that our situation was very stressful and very crazy and like awful so <laughs> if that's like a good comparison for like those of you who have been following us for a really long time prior to like 2020 our lives were so bad that a pandemic was really not the worst thing that had happened to us in our lives so like it was a really it was a really dark time but um yeah so it's uh where was I going with this let me have a sip of coffee it's been like just not so not so bad the pandemic it's been kind of sad. I mean, we haven't been able to really leave the house at all, but our lives have been a lot better. Oh yeah, I was saying like why we didn't ever plan stuff beforehand. Our lives were so crazy that it was like no point in planning anything. Everything just went haywire all the time. So yeah, that's why we never really did it until now. Oh, and a cool thing that I just added to the website is because now we plan out our month, I've put like a little bit of a, well, a little calendar on our website it's at the bottom of our home page but also it's in our 
about section. So if you go to the main menu and you click about, it'll be down there. It'll be like the monthly calendar or shop calendar or whatever. And that has important dates. So like a reminder on the 7th of every month that that's the last day to sign up for that month's clubs. Um, you know, other important things like when things are leaving the shop, when new things are coming into the shop, all of that stuff. So now hopefully I'll be able to keep up with that <clears throat> and do one every month. So far we just have February because we still, we don't plan too far in advance because we're very artistically minded as far as like creators and business owners. And so it's kind of like, we like to leave ourselves open to inspiration. So like Bridgerton was not planned at all. We saw Bridgerton, fell in love with Bridgerton, and then we were like, we need to do Bridgerton colors. So, you know, we like to leave, we like to leave a little bit of space for that kind of thing. Um, and another thing that I should tell you guys, um, I could put this like in shop update news, but I'll just tell you now, we added a new tier on Patreon. So we do have a Patreon that allows you to shop. If you even choose like the lowest tier, which is $3 a month, you get to shop our shop updates an hour earlier than the general public. So if we have limited ready to ship that we are uploading into the shop that week, you get first dibs and you're only competing with other patrons to get those items opposed to competing with the general public. So that is um, a cool thing. And if you're interested in joining our Patreon, which would be awesome, um, we really appreciate the support. I don't get really paid for doing podcasts or anything. So it's kind of like a little extra income for what I do um, on the farm. I do almost all the media stuff and what have you. I pretty much run the Patreon all on my own. So yeah, but we added a new tier. We had three tiers previously. Now we have four. We have Bunny Bee, which is the lowest. Um, Goat Bee, which is $6 a month. Sheep Bee, which is $10 a month. And now we have Llama Bee. And the Llama Bee tier is open to US only right now. Um, just because the shipping and everything is all rolled into the price. It's $45 a month, so $10 for what sheep be pay. So that's like just included um, and everything that the sheep be tier gets. But then you also get a skein of yarn shipped to you every month. And the skein of yarn is going to be something that you've, it'll be a brand new color. No one will have ever seen it before at all. Um, we will be using this as kind of like a little bit of freedom for Sun Bee and Queen Bee to create new colors and try out new dye techniques that they don't usually go with. Um, so that way, instead of us using up yarn and not really being able to sell it or do anything with it, now we can, they can test a new colorway and a new concept. And you guys get the test skein, which is really, really cool. So it'll all be, every month it'll be on the same base, but it'll be a mystery base from our website. So it'll be anywhere from like a $27 um, valued skein to a $33 value skein. So it could be our merino cashmere silk. It could be shimmer sock, which is our sparkle silk merino base. It could be um, you know, our favorite coquette, squishy socks, squishy DK, one of the worsteds, like any of that. So it'll be, it'll be fun. Everybody will get the same color, um, but it will, and everybody will get the same base, but it'll be a mystery every month. So if you're interested in doing that, um, the link to the Patreon is below. But yes, so that's another thing that I was working on. And I'm really not looking forward to taxes. Now that I mentioned it, now my brain is just focused on taxes, but yes. So, the coffee's really good. My first cup this morning, I wasn't feeling it. I wonder if I had like a weird, like my taste buds were just off, but it kind of tasted like, I don't know, just kind of off to me. Um, but this cup is really good, so I have another sip. Also, you will see that we're still using our winter themed mugs. 
that's another thing we did with the online shopping. <laughs> we bought um all new mugs for, or not mugs, dishware sets for like almost every season so far. So we have fall seasoned mugs and dishware that all matches. We got a winter set once winter came and now that spring is coming, we got a spring set <laughs> and we haven't switched over yet because it's still like February. Though they're kind of cutesy and I feel like they'd be really cute for like Valentine's but we haven't switched yet so I don't know maybe she's just she and I mean by shammy queen bee maybe she is just waiting for March 1st which is fine. I mean we don't want to like overdo it and those ones could probably go from March to May so that's like three months. I guess that's like fair. We only want to keep them for like three months. The fall ones go until November so then December, January, February for the winter ones. March, April, May for spring. Yeah so I mean yeah why not. Um but yeah, we have five people in our house so we're using lots of dishes all the time and we're very food motivated people and food orientated people. So I feel like it's not, it's not like unreasonable for us to have cute dishes for every season. Also, we never had cute dishes. We used the same dishes my like whole entire life and I'm like 28 up until we moved two years ago so like I feel like the only time we would change dishware is when too many items had broken that we needed new dishware and even then it was just kind of like we added it in with old stuff so I don't know we're kind of like growing up and becoming like settled in and it feels like a lot of expenses like right off the bat but that's because it's stuff we never bought before and now we're all buying it at once kind of like a married like a new married couple like we're just making our home now we never had a home like really before it sounds so sad but it's true we didn't really have a home ever before but yeah and now that we literally are home all the time it's like well we have to make it a happy place to be because there are five of us and we're all going a little bit stir crazy with all of the snow we are getting so much snow it is ridiculous we have drifts that are like three feet high outside and it just keeps coming and I'm like so done with it. I wish we had gotten snow in December and now we didn't have snow because it's like what are we doing with all the snow? It's just we're drowning in it. Peach likes snow. Peach is really cute right now. Yeah what are you doing? Are you napping? I'll show you guys what she looked like. She's very cute. You're very cute. Yeah, you napping. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> I just want to cuddle you. I want to nap too. So, yeah. Um, and other than that, I bought something. Um, I actually bought because Golden Coil, who makes our planners, also makes just regular notebooks. And my designer designing pattern design notebook is getting a little bit old and it's just like a regular little notebook from little like regular standard sized notebook that you get from literally any store it's not fancy at all um and it has grid paper in it so I can kind of like use that as a reference for sketching designs and what have you and it's kind of starting to get worn out a little bit. I've had it for three years. It's almost full, but not quite. Um, but I'm going to want to keep it on my shelf for a very long time to like reference back to because I have ideas sketched out in there that I haven't like fleshed out yet. So I don't want it to be like super worn and falling apart. I want it to be like decent looking when it's on my shelf. So I invested in a nice notebook from Golden Coil, which was pricey, but I usually carry my design notebook with me everywhere. So like it'll always be in my tote bag or what have you. So I kind of wanted something a little bit sturdier. Um, the spirals on these are really, really nice. 
Um, and I got one that isn't quite this thick. I think it's like maybe two thirds as thick as this one just because, again, I don't want to have to fill the whole thing and feel that pressure and have it be falling apart by the time it's full. I want to be able to keep it on my shelf and keep it nice. So I think I got like 160 pages in it. This one's 240 pages. So yeah. But um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. And I wanted to get another like of the fake leather, fake leather, like faux leather type covers but the one that I wanted I was like oh I don't need to buy it yet so I was looking at it the other day I was like I'll wait they had restocked their covers and I was like I'll wait and get it like once I fill up my other one a little bit more in like a month and then they sold out and I was like well they have one of the linen covers that I really really wanted so I bought it I was like I'm not messing around and then once I need it they don't have it in stock then I'm gonna have to settle for something I don't really like so I just bought it um but yeah, so I now I have to wait for them to make it and send it to me. But yeah. So let's talk about whips. I've been like chatting with you guys for a while now. So let's talk about whips and FOs. There aren't really any FOs except for, I mentioned this a few podcasts ago, but I had made Send B a pumpkin hat for her birthday. So the pumpkin hat spelled P-U-I-M-C-I with an accent mark N is a hat I designed this past fall and it's like a cute little type beret and I'm gonna put it on and it's gonna mess up my hair but it's just like a cute little beret style um cute little hat and it looks kind of like it's designed to look kind of like a pumpkin with the slip stitches that go up the side. Um, kind of like the sectioned, like reminiscent of the sections of like a pumpkin, the indents. And then it alternates with a double moss and stockinette. And then I designed this little woven button, which there is a free tutorial of online. And if you look up the pattern on Ravelry, the link to this button and it's also here on our channel. It's called the basket weave button is on there. But so this is done with a worsted weight yarn. I decided to double up our coquette sock because I was thinking I want to knit something for Senbi last minute for her birthday. Her birthday was the 29th of December. Um, I had like two or three days to knit it and I got it done in two days. And I knew she was making I'll show you real quick. I knew she was making this shawl. I didn't bring it with me. I knew she was making this shawl, which I'm pretty sure I've shown to you guys before. But it is the gathering shawl. And it is done in our layered colorway and our Highlander colorway. And it's the two color gathering shawl. And this has that little bit of bright blue and I thought it would match really cute. It would be complimentary but not like matchy matchy. And we had this in stock. This is our blue jean. Pretty sure yes, it's our blue jean colorway from um, our tonal section on our website. But we only had it in coquette sock and I knew that Queen Bee couldn't dye it in time, have it dry, and then knit it up. So I just held two strands together of our coquette sock and made the hat. And it's really cute. It kind of is a little bit floppier than if you used a true worsted. And I kind of like that for it. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. She looks really cute in it. Sen has these blueberry eyes. She's the only bee with blueberry eyes. The rest of us have shades of like sea green to more like hazily green, all of us other bees, but Sen B has blueberry blue eyes. And so it kind of brings them out. It looks really good with her complexion. Like I'm just really happy with it. So I wanted to show you guys this because before my joints and my thumbs and my wrists got kind of messed up, I mentioned that a few podcasts ago, um, and I haven't been able to knit much. I knit this. And I did make something, so. <laughs> but anyway, 
Then we have half of a pair of socks done. So I showed this in the last episode. This is our Fizzing Wisbees colorway that um, we just uploaded in the shop is ready to ship, so it should still be in the shop. But this is Coquette Sock, and it is the Crunkle Socks pattern by KF Jones. I'll link it below. Um, but yeah, it's this really cute, like bubbly almost texture. But it's a really easy, I think it's just a four row repeat. So, and I think it's a like four stitch repeat. So it's super easy and super cute. So Senbi made these and she's making them for herself, which is a bummer, but they're super cute and spring-like and candy-like and just adorable. Um, but also we have Queen Bee has knit, where is her project? Whew. Queen Bee has been working on her collection of Christmassy socks. So I'm pretty sure I showed these in the last episode, but she is working on these Fairy Lights, pretty sure this is the Fairy Lights colorway, by um, West Yorkshire Spinners. And it is a sparkle yarn. And she has gotten everything done except the toe needs to be Kitchenered. So that Senbi or me are going to end up Kitchenering her sock. But yeah, isn't it cute? Like look at all those colors worked up. Just adorable. Super, super cute. Um, yeah, she just zooms through her socks, Queen Bee. I'm very jealous. So does Sun Bee, so does Baby Bee. Super jealous. Um, but what did I want to show? Oh, also, Queen Bee is working on, and she's using the super cute, the super cute Valentine's bag. This is by Fancy Boy Designs. I've shown his bags before. Super cute bag. She bought this during December, and she was like, well, I'm going to need that in a few months, so. But she is also working on these socks. They're super beautiful. This is the, I think this is, I was gonna say this was string of lights pattern, but I think it's just a three by one rib actually. Um, pair of socks out of, I'm blanking on this. This is a Zauber ball. And I should probably mention what needle size everybody's using. I'm pretty sure this is a US one. Pretty sure this one's a US one. And I'm pretty sure this is a US one. If they made project pages on Ravelry, I will link them, but I don't think anybody did. But I'm pretty sure they're all on US ones. Um, or Sen probably, used whatever the pattern called for for those crunkled socks but yeah i knit always on zeros and this these needles seem too too thick for zeros where are you wandering off to i have a cardboard box on the couch right now because of something i'm going to show you in a little bit and she's like <laughs> trying to walk past it without bumping it you want to sit up in your chair Okay. Okay, weirdo. But anyways, so everybody's been working on socks and even though my thumbs and wrists have been bothering me, um, I just have like weird chronic inflammation that shows up sometimes for those of you who weren't around when I mentioned that like a podcast or two ago. Um, so I haven't been able to knit like a ton and it's kind of like bumming me out because I haven't been able to design a bunch. But... I decided I wanted to learn to double knit. So my boyfriend saw in one of our recent newsletters the Snow Queen colorway, which is all sold out now. Um, and he saw it posted and he was like, oh my gosh, I love this, this color right here. And I said, well, which one, which color? Because it was all three of these winter colors we had just released. It was Snow Queen. Um, 
Frost Fairy, and Flurries, which we're all going to release next year for winter. We decided because they're beautiful. But um, for right now, we only had like a couple of them. And sorry. When I do my makeup, my eyes run. I don't know why. It's like a curse. So I'm a little bit sniffly. <laughs> a little bit sniffly. Um, but I was like, well, I want to make him something for Valentine's Day. I don't know if it's going to actually get done because we're getting close to Valentine's Day and I've only gotten this much done. I'm going to make him a cowl. So it's a little over a quarter of a way done. I wanted it to be kind of like, kind of like, you know, bunched up a little bit. Um, but I'm thinking of just making this a pattern because it's super cute. What it is, is it's double knit. Um, I had never double knit before and I'm, I've been having a little bit of an issue. Um, patrons on Patreon who are in our Sheep B tier and we do knit nights together on Zoom will know that I am constantly forgetting which color I just did knit with. <laughs> Because you like switch and it's just it's a thing. So if it, if you've ever double knit you might maybe you've had that problem too. I just forget which one I did last. I should really put a progress keeper on the one that I knit last. But sometimes you sometimes you knit the same side with the same side facing you two rows in a row. So then like that doesn't help you. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so anyways. Um, I also used that online like pooling, color pooling um, calculator. I forget what it's, I think it's called Plan Your Pool or Planned Pooling, something like that. Google it because it's really cool. What you do is you knit up a little swatch in the color and um, needle size that you want to use and you type in like how many stitches are blue, how many are purple, how many stitches are, you know, silver. And of course with like variegated yarn, it's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but I was able to figure out how many stitches to cast on to get a pretty good stripey pool effect. So you can see like it's kind of pooled a little bit in sections and it's pretty much staying a little bit more uniform and I'm very happy with it. So this side is squishy DK and this side is, um, what am I trying to say? It is our bubble sock, but it's held double to make a DK because we had it on hand. It's our silver bullet colorway and I just was tired of it sitting around. And also I thought that it, it complements it really well because there's silver in this colorway. And so yeah, so he'll have that nice silky, woolly silky texture close to his skin. And yeah, I figured it would just be cute. Blues and purples are his favorite colors, so yeah. But he picked out the skein, I meant to say that, he picked out the skein like specifically out of the photo. So I said, well, which color did you like best out of this photo? And he said, this one third from right. And there were two of the Snow Queen colors right next to each other. I'm like, they're, they're, those ones are the same color, but like I, I was like, well, you know what? I'll take the one that he specifically said that he liked and I'll make him something out of it. And I've never made him anything that is like variegated. He likes the variegated skeins the best with the way that they look skeined up. But I don't know if he's gonna like it the best to knit up. So we will see. Hopefully he likes it. Um, hopefully I can finish it. My thumbs haven't been bothering me too bad like my joints. Um, I think that wearing compression gloves, because I've been wearing like compression gloves all the time, um, I think that's been helping. So unfortunately I can't knit when I have the compression gloves on because like the way that I put tension with my yarn around my finger like it just gets gets weird but um yeah so that's all for whips and fo's and i wanted to tell you guys about what i was wearing so i am wearing the flippy floppy fun shawl this is a free pattern on ravelry 
Um, it is just this really nice lace and garter stitch. It's a one skein project. It's knit with our Koi Pond colorway here. And it is our Coquette Sock yarn base. But I also have it um, being held with this cute little shawl cuff. And the shawl cuff is made out of cork. So it is like vegan, vegetarian friendly. And this is by Crafty Flutterby. Um, so Michelle of Crafty Flutterby. And I will link her below because she's a sweetheart. Um, and she is, I believe she's vegan. She's either vegan or vegetarian. So she wanted to have shawl cuffs that are, you know, cruelty free. I personally am not vegan or vegetarian. <laughs> And I like leather and stuff, but um, I do appreciate being able to purchase and support like cruelty free and also like using cork is I believe also pretty environmentally friendly, which I'm very passionate about. So I also think it's really cute. It's got that cute little like metal shimmery look, but yeah. So I'm just, I just decided to throw this on for podcasting because Lord knows I don't leave my house, so I only dress up for you guys. <laughs> but um, let's talk about the shop update. I don't know how much time I have left. I know I only had an hour and 20 minutes of footage on my card to film. So hopefully we're not running out of time. So I wanted to remind you guys that we do have some ready to ship Valentine's yarn still in the shop. Um, we have these super cute conversation heart bundles. So these are, oh my gosh, they are $35, I think, just for one of these little sets. And they're in our Coquette Sock and Squishy Sock. So I have the Squishy Sock one with me. And they come tied with a bow. So if you want a cute little Valentine that's yarny, you know, you can drop a hint. I'm actually like super in love with how cute these are and I think that a stripey conversation heart themed project would be absolutely adorable. Um, we have our myriad of minis cowl pattern um, that would look absolutely adorable in this and you could make it twice as long almost. Yeah you can make it twice as long because it's literally double of what that pattern requires. So that would be super, super, super cute. And like a cute little springtime because even though these are conversation heart colors, they're also super like Eastery spring, early spring, like little daffodil almost colors. So yeah. Um, and also they pair so cute with our rainbow drops color. Look at that. Ah, it's so cute. And also our, let me call you sweetheart color. So you can make like a really cute shawl where you stripe these in the beginning. Kind of like, I think it's called Surprise Party by Helen Stewart. Curious Handmade. Google something like that. And it's um some kind of party shawl where she does stripe minis at the top but if you did something like that and literally like any top-down shawl pattern you just stripe minis for the beginning and then use another color for the rest of it like how cute would that be like this is why i'm so bummed about my hands bothering me because i'm not able to like knit a ton but yeah and i just have like a ton of stuff over here but also we have which complements let me call you sweetheart perfectly. Chocolate wine and roses. Which is such a beautiful moody color. I just want to do a whole sweater out of this. And it's kind of like almost like that Lady Danbury tonal. But it does have this chocolatey color in it. Like, like how beautiful would that be? Even just like a shawl. And it's almost like because it's such a plum plummy color and such a warm color it would look so good in winter too like christmas time but yeah 
These two look super cute together. I'm just looking at all of these yarns. I'm like, I just want to knit all the things. And my joints are not, are not, like, being nice to me. So, like, how cute. Little basket of Valentine's yarns. So, yeah, these are still ready to ship. And they should arrive before Valentine's Day if you order, like, like, I think that the last time we can get things out on Tuesday. So if you order by Monday, I think that it would still arrive by Valentine's Day. Mm, it's so cute! Um, but we are putting some brand new things in the shop. So I have another basket. Let's put these here. Oh, I have another basket of beautiful yarn. So this Friday... Pride and Prejudice is leaving the shop, which is very sad, but we cannot have too many dyed to order colors in the shop at once. And we are bringing in Emma. So if you want to see what any of these Jane Austen colors look like, Baby B did knit our Jane Austen um, advent calendar, which is all the Jane Austen, um, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Sense and Sensibility colors into a Hugo and Hearth scarf for this past Christmas. So if you go on our Ravelry, which is linked below. So if you go in Ravelry and you go to our Advent Party thread, you can find Haleana, I think is her name on Ravelry, or that's our baby bee. And you can see all of the photos that she posted of each color swatched up. But I just wanna show you guys these colors real quick because they're so spring-like. So we decided to do Emma for February because it is, she like sees herself as a matchmaker and it's a Valentine's month. And also it's going into spring. So it just kind of suits the season, right? But we have here, we have Emma. And all, well, these are all variegated, but this one you could almost say it's because it's so uniform in like, not uniform, but it's like the same palette almost. I would still say it's a variegated, but you could also say it's a speckled if you don't mind a little bit of tonal pooling in the background. But these are technically all three are variegated. So we have Emma here in this beautiful gold. And we kind of did use um, the most recent Emma as adaptation as our inspiration for this. So she's wearing that really beautiful gold. And so we decided to put her in this like golden orange color. Um, and then we have Harriet Smith. So she's just really sweet, very girlish, has these really cute speckles on it. I believe this focuses. I think it is. But yeah, and she has like this peachy color in there as well, as well as this really girlish pinky purple, which actually complements... Oh, I'm looking at it. Hmm. They could do a cute fade together. This is definitely more vibrant, but this color reminds me of this one a little bit. Super cute. And then we have Highbury. And it's this pretty green, very springish green, purpley speckles, pinky pink, very cute. And then we have a few more manly-ish colors. So we have Mr. Frank Churchill. And this is the same color family as some of our Bridgerton colors. So I feel like if you wanted to do a fade, this could possibly fade with um, the Duke of Hastings really well. But it's got this cool gray and also a taupe gray in it. And then this really nice plummy mauve rich color. That's Mr. Frank Churchill. 
Then we have Donwell Abbey. And this is just really pretty tonally green. Like this is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. Um, I would make a sweater out of this. And because of how it's dyed, you could get a little bit of color pulling, but I feel like if you alternated skeins, it would tone it down enough. But like, look at how beautiful. It's just like the coolest, I think, I'm just like obsessed with how this green looks with this green. It's like this dusted grayish green and then like a really nice springy green. It's like bluey green, I don't know, I'm just obsessed. And then we have, which matches of course, Mr. Knightley. And also, sorry, somebody was walking around out there and Peach was getting upset. And then what also matches is Mr. Woodhouse. So Emma's papa. So if you wanted to do a more earthy like fade, these would fade beautifully together or just like go together in the most lovely way. So now last but not least thing I have to show you for the shop update and then we are done. And then we're done. I have, to, yes, I have a cardboard box. I'll put the cardboard box down. But my friend Hannah, um, or Banana Bee, we call her because she's like a sister to me. We've known each other since we were literally in the womb. Um, our moms were in the same Lamaze class and we played together as kids. We ended up going to the same, um, elementary slash junior high middle school together um and we stayed friends ever since um she is my best friend she has been sewing pretty much her whole life and she has made us some project bags over the years i've shown you a few of them but recently for christmas she made us the super cute flannel um sweater size project bags so they are flannel on top um and like high quality like shirt flannel and canvas on the bottom and she made us each a matching one like literally this exact one um i believe this one is baby bees pattern that she used but she made us all a project bag and i said hannah I've been talking about this for years, but why don't you just make some and let's put them in the shop because they're really nice. Um, she even put in, I don't know if you can see this because it's kind of dark. She even puts in a divided pocket in here. So there's one slightly narrower section for like a pencil or something, whatever you have that's narrower on your on hand, scissors, and then a wider pouch here. And I am excited to say these will be in the shop for $45. She has some St. Patrick's ones that are coming too, but so far I have only one of this pattern. I have one of this one which I am obsessed with because it is so cute and I love the flannel um and canvas combination because I feel like it's so northeast east coast adventure -y. like how cute is this and these are drawstring bags so they drawstring like this I don't have anything in it but they are like sweater size bags they would hold gosh six skeins easy in them um so six skeins worth of yarn i would say very easily um but yeah super super cute this is the um pattern that she gifted queen bee this one's like my favorite one though then we have this beautiful bluish oh my gosh this one is lovely i can't remember because i haven't used a mine yet um if this one's 
I think this one is my pattern that she used for me. But like how pretty is that? And they do all have the pockets. Um, and yeah, they will be ready to ship in the shop. I'm very excited. So we only have one each. We just have this one and this one of these patterns. And we have two of this beautiful blue. And we have two of this really cute green. And the green is super cute too because it has the blue lining. So all of them have the blue lining. And it has green canvas on the bottom. This one has like a charcoal black canvas on the bottom. And these two have blue canvas. But I'm super, super excited about these. And I'm hoping you guys are excited too. Um, Hannah is, like she is my best friend. She's a great person. Um, she actually teaches um, special ed course, like specialty. I'm not, I'm not a teacher, so I don't know the proper terminology for teachers, but she is a special ed teacher for elementary, middle school, junior high aged children. And she, um, yeah, she's, she's a really good person. She's always like had a passion for helping children with needs and stuff like that. So like, I don't know, I don't know how she does it. She's so patient. Like she would teach at a summer camp um, and be a counselor. And she would always say that like the like special needs week was her favorite one because like, I don't know, she just has such a connection with those kids. So she is, I'm really happy to like help her out and help her craft a little bit more and um, see where this goes. So yeah, so look forward to St. Patrick's Day bags coming too, but these ones will be in the shop and there's just that limited quantity and that's it for the episode. And I'm not running out of time yet, so. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm glad because I literally had like no space on this card. I had literally like one hour and 18 minutes. So I'm wrapping it up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you had a fun time. I hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend getting caught in the wool and all of that fun stuff. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please, please give it a thumbs up subscribe, turn on that little bell so you get notifications for when we put up another video, um, leave a comment. I don't always get a chance to respond to comments, but I do read them all as immediately as soon as they come in. And yeah, that's it for today. So you guys take care and I'm sending you a lot of warmth and happiness your way since I am stuck here in the snow and cold and let's just think warm, happy thoughts. Bye guys.